Happy Monday, everybody. It is Monday, January 18, 2020. I hope this finds you doing well at the top of the week and maybe for you the top of the morning too. Let's begin our devotion in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. If you're like me, you're still riding high off of Vicar's uh, incredible, great sermon. I so appreciated his sharing God's word and his insight that he gave us yesterday in his sermon. If you haven't had a chance to hear it, I'd encourage you to go back. Uh, either service, the 8 or the 1030, was just fantastic. Uh, but as always, we keep moving forward. And so now we turn our attention to this next coming Sunday with anticipation the third Sunday after Epiphany. Today we're going to be looking at the psalm appointed for that Sunday. It's Psalm 62. It's a song that talks about peace and confidence in the context of a life in a world that is so unsure, so unsettled. Uh, it's expected, we think, that this was written by David late in life, and so that gives some more context and meaning when he talks in here about being attacked by enemies, about just how life is so unsure unsure. And in that context, he contrasts, contrasts that with the sureness and the solidity that is our God, our rock and our refuge. So let's jump right in. Sim, a Psalm, again, 62. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. Now, why silence? Well, silence denotes a sense of, of calmness, of confidence, of peace. And the psalmist continues, from him comes my salvation. He only is my rock, that refuge, right? That, that hiding place for us as his children, that rock. We continue, my salvation, my fortress, and I shall not be greatly shaken. As Luthers, we can't help when we see that word fortress to think about Luther's great hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Verse 3, how long will all of you attack a man to batter him like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? Right After time, just like a fence grows old and, and wears out, so we too can feel like that tottering fence weakened over time. Verse 4, they only plan to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. Now here's a word you see scattered throughout the Psalms. Uh, it's the word selah, S-E-L-A-H. Uh, and, and honestly, in, in all my studies, I've never found any respectable uh, scholar who with any confidence says they know what this word means. Um, overall, it sounds like the best guess people have is this was some sort of musical notation, reminding us that these psalms were originally written to be sung in the context of worship. So the psalms we can think about as the Old Testament Israel's, even Jesus, right? Uh, uh, his hymn book for worship. Uh, and they think there's some connection there with the harp, which would make sense since David was a musician who played the harp. But we continue, verse 5. For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. You get a sense here of that repetition like you would in a, a song, a hymn. Verse 7. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. 
Put no trust in extortion. Set no vain hopes in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Only God has spoken. Twice, or once God has spoken. Twice have I heard this. Now that sort of repetition there, once he's spoken, twice I've heard, uh, gives certainty to this statement. It's almost in the New Testament where Jesus would say, Amen, Amen, or as it's usually translated, truly, truly. And that's, here's that statement. The power belongs to God. And that to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love. For you will render to a man according to his work. What an incredible hope and, again, confidence and peace for you and I today, as oftentimes it seems like there are so many things, so many groups, uh, there's so much fear uh, in our lives that as Christians, no matter what may be happening around us or to us or to our loved ones, we can rest assured that God is our rock, our refuge, and our salvation. And he has this covenant, this steadfast, unwavering, unshakable love for you and me. Each and every day, if you're like me, you wake up and, and you have some joy, some things you're excited about, but you also have some worries. You have some struggles in your life. I pray that this psalm brings you that confidence and that surety that God uh, intends for you today as you begin this new week in his name. Let's continue with prayer. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Then let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, we have confidence, we have surety in Christ, but we still need to go wash our hands. Do it for at least 20 seconds. Hey, to make sure you do it long enough, sing the doxology and remember your baptism and how God has made you his child. And you, in him now, you find your refuge as his child, as he so shows you his steadfast love today and always. Have a fantastic day.